In the world of computer science and algorithm design, one approach that often stands out for its simplicity and efficiency is the use of 3D algorithms. These algorithms make locally optimal choices at each step with the hope of finding the global optimum. In this video, we will delve into the concept of 3D algorithms, explore examples to illustrate their functioning, compare them with non 3 alternatives, and finally, weigh their advantages and disadvantages. So, starting with, what is a 3D algorithm? Well, at its core, a 3D algorithm builds up a solution piece by piece, always choosing the next piece that offers the most immediate benefit. The essence lies in making the best choice at each step without considering the consequences of the current decisions on future steps. While this might seem short-sighted, in many cases, it surprisingly leads to a globally optimal solution. Next, how to use greedy algorithms. Before applying a greedy algorithm to any problem, you need to ask two questions. One, do you need the best option at the moment from the problem? Two, do you need an optimal solution, either minimum or maximum value or not? If your answer to these questions is yes, then a greedy algorithm is a good choice to solve your problem. Next, let's look into its procedure. So assume you have a problem with a set of numbers and you need to find the minimum value. You start by defining the constraint, which in this case is finding the minimum value. Then each number will be scanned and checked on each constraint which serves as a condition to be fulfilled. If the condition is not true, it is added to the remaining value list, but if the condition is true, the number is selected and returned as the final solution. Here's the flowchart representing this process. Now let's take up a greedy algorithm example of the famous coin change problem. In this, imagine you are a cashier and you need to give customer change using the least number of coins. You have the coins of different denomination to be specific 1, 5, 10, 25 and 50. And your goal is to minimize the number of coins given as change. In the greedy approach, the greedy strategy here is to always pick the largest coin that is less than or equal to the remaining change and repeat the process until the change becomes zero. By considering having the coins of respective denominations, if the change is 73, the greedy algorithm would first sort the coins in the descending order, that is 50, 25, 10, 5 and 1. Number 2, start with the largest coin, that is 50 and subtract it from the remaining change until it becomes 0. Here's how it will go. So, as a result, our use of greedy algorithm returns 50, 10, 10, 1, 1, 1 at the expense of total 6 coins. Now, by considering a non-greedy approach like dynamic programming, where we calculate the minimum number of coins for each possible amount iteratively, it will first create an array dp of size 74 that is from 0 to 73 and initialize all elements to positive infinity except dp0 which is set to 0. Number 2, it will then iterate from each coin and update the dp array based on the minimum number of coins needed for each amount. So here the algorithm thinks ahead and tries different combination to find the absolute minimum number of coins needed, which for 73 cents would be 2 coins, 50 and 25, and the cashier can take the risk back as change from the customer. So in the context of giving change efficiently, the dynamic programming approach ensures you use fewest coins possible making it a more reliable strategy for achieving the optimal solution. But do note that while dynamic programming approach guarantees the optimal solution, it might computationally be more expensive compared to the greedy algorithm for smaller inputs. Next, let's look into greedy versus non greedy approach from a comparative analysis and differentiate between them. In context to our example, the results were for greedy results, it was 6 coins, which was 50, 10, 10, 1, 1, 1. And for dynamic programming result were 2 coins, which was 50 and 25. Now, let's see an approach analysis for each. In terms of greedy algorithms, they are often more efficient in terms of time complexity. 
especially when the problem has optimal substructure and overlapping subproblems. And also, the lack of backtracking makes them faster for certain scenarios as well. Greedy algorithms are generally simpler to conceptualize and implement as they often involve fewer lines of code compared to their non-greedy counterparts. While they do not guarantee to provide a globally optimal solution, greedy algorithms often yield solutions that are close to optimal. And lastly, the immediate local optimization can be advantageous in certain real-world scenarios as well. Next, non-greedy algorithms. Now, in here, algorithms like dynamic programming provides certain guarantee of optimality as they exhaustively explore and evaluate all possibilities, ensuring the best solution. Non-greedy algorithms are versatile and applicable to a broader range of problems as they are not limited by the need for a greedy choice property. Also, non-greedy algorithms can be more complex to implement and understand due to the need for managing states and exploring multiple possibilities. Next, let's look into advantages and disadvantages of greedy algorithms. First, the advantages. Number one, in terms of efficiency, greedy algorithms are often faster and more efficient for problems with optimal substructure. Their simplicity also contributes to faster development and debugging cycles. Number two, in terms of simplicity, the straightforward nature of greedy algorithms makes them accessible to programmers with varying level of expertise. With them, rapid implementation is possible for various time-sensitive projects. And number three, when seen in terms of local optimization, the particular scenarios where local operations lead to global optimizations greedy algorithms shine. They are particularly useful for problems with a greedy choice property. Never forget that. Next, the disadvantages. There is a lack of optimality guarantee. One of the major drawbacks is the absence of a guarantee for a global optimal solution when it comes to greedy algorithms. Number two, problem dependency. So, the effectiveness of greedy algorithms heavily depend on the nature of the problem. Be aware of that, and that's a big drawback. Number three, limited scope. So, greedy algorithms might overlook certain global patterns or considerations. They are not suitable for problems where future steps significantly influence the optimality of choices. Based on all of this, now we can clearly say that even though greedy algorithms are straightforward and helpful in optimization problems, they don't offer the best solutions at all times. Also, never forget that greedy algorithms only run once so they don't check the correctness of the result produced as well. Lastly, in conclusion, I'd like to say that greedy algorithms offer an efficient approach to problem solving in many scenarios. While they lack guarantee of a global optimal solution, their simplicity and speed makes them valuable tools for certain types of problems. In the end, the choice between greedy and non-greedy approaches ultimately depends on the specific requirements and constraints of the problem at hand. With that, I hope this video was helpful to you and served value. If you love my content, feel free to smash that like button and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do as it keeps me motivated and helps me create more content like this for you.